So we all love AI. We all been using AI for a while now, especially the students, because why not? The, there are so many great and amazing tools that help you in your dissertation and your dissertation research. However, what's not helping is that there's so much vagueness about what's allowed and what's not allowed. People are freaking out because they don't know if they will get in trouble. So as a result, sometimes they decide not to tell anybody and just not to mention any tools that they use. And this sometimes may lead to even more serious consequences where they get accused of things they never did. So let's talk about what is allowed, what is not allowed, how to use all these tools ethically. I'll talk about what is ethical AI use in your dissertation and then I'll mention all sorts of things that you can uh, use AI for and then finally I'll talk about how we can talk about it in your dissertation openly how you should mention that what you should do what is the extent that's allowed when it comes to AI use in your dissertation so overall as I was preparing for this video I researched uh, all sorts of universities whole bunch of universities online I looked at their guidelines and I was actually pleasantly surprised to find lots of guidelines that seem to acknowledge uh, that AI is basically something inevitable so something we already knew but uh, as you know I'm quite critical of some universities and quite often they are pretty uh, conservative and therefore and especially people working there some people working there so they've been kind of uh, very reluctant to to adopt this new uh, this new change however as i said i'm pleased to see that now they definitely understand that it's something inevitable it's something needed they actually see the value and see the benefits of using ai and therefore they start to develop their own guidelines to help the students understand uh, not only uh, how to use it ethically or what they are not allowed to do which uh, tends to be the narrative usually uh, instead they also talk about the good use of AI or how they can actually benefit from using AI which is a great uh, thing to see and based on some of these guidelines that I analyzed I developed this list and the content for this video so uh, the key universities that I uh, that I included in this uh, guidelines are uh, Newcastle University Oxford Stanford University Monash University and my personal favorite just because of the name <laughs> London School of Health and Tropical Medicine how cool does it sound I have no idea what they do but it just sounds really really cool so all of these universities and I'm sure all of us agree that ethical use of AI is generally using AI in a way that supports what you do in a way that supports your learning so support rather than replace your intellectual contribution and uh, it's the use of AI where it does not generate any original content so what is original content original content is basically something that it does it creates well without your knowledge or without your involvement if you let ai just write your whole chapter for you not to mention the whole dissertation that's obviously not ethical use and i'm sure i don't have to explain that to you uh, so this is not ethical use because it, it's uh, a generated original content for you instead of you so you you didn't contribute to it at all you just it's as if somebody wrote your dissertation basically same thing about uh data analysis so if you just uh, feed all that data into chat GPT and just ask it just give me the results back then again this is original content but then if you are in the control if you're in charge of the process of data analysis and then you're using that tool that amazing tool that chat GPT or any other AI uh, is uh, using that for just to support data analysis because you know what you're doing so you're giving specific commands and you're ordering it to to or asking it nicely ideally to to do things for you then it's different because you are generating that original content you are the the researcher and that tool is basically your tool or research assistant it's not the researcher itself but i'll come back to that in a second so now let's talk about how you can use ai and most of these things will be something you're aware of and probably something you have been doing but just so you know Lots of these things are, again, they come from these university websites. So the universities do understand that you can and you probably should use AI for, the, for this purpose. So during the literature review, for example, let's start with that one. How can you use it? So again, uh, you can use it to support your exploration of the literature rather than, of course, just reading the literature for you. So what that means in practice, you can use it for brainstorming, brainstorm ideas, come up with uh, ideas for research gaps, trends within the data, or you can ask questions about the current research and get summaries of the current research. Use it to sort articles by the different themes. So you know about tools like SciSpace. I've been talking about this amazing tool and again you can use it to to summarize you can use it to, to ask questions about the data uh, i mean about the articles so basically to sift through all that material that you can find online so this is an amazing tool you don't have to read every single article that later may uh, turn out to be simply irrelevant to your needs instead you can communicate you can talk and collaborate with that tool 
uh, to help you decide which articles to keep, which articles to read. So yes, it does read the articles for you. I said initially not for reading. You do use it for reading at some stage, but eventually to decide whether you need to, you want to read that article yourself. So if you just rely on, on AI tools and you never even see that original article, just ask questions uh, about the article, then as you can again, probably imagine this is not considered ethical use. But then during writing, so what can you do once you start writing? Because this is also something that we all probably want to know. So again, don't use it as something to outsource your writing. It's the same as if you use other people or ghost writers to write your dissertation. You can decide for yourself how you feel about it and whether this is uh, something that's considered ethical. But there is so much you can do with AI at this stage. So you can ask it for ideas to structure your sections or chapters. Just ask for ideas, for bullet points, for how to structure, get feedback uh, on your writing. So feedback on clarity and grammar and style. Uh, you can also ask it to help with some rephrasing and transition and wording, things like that. So again, just be very careful. I, I posted this uh, short video recently where I explained how I was flagged as basically uh, providing AI generated content, even though it was my content, but I did feed it back to ChatGPT to, for some restructuring and proofreading. So just be careful uh, for it not to change it too much because then it has a structure that get recognized in these AI detectors. And now data analysis, my favorite, of course. So, you know, I talked about data analysis a lot. I have lots of issues with data analysis conducted by AI. The main uh, issue being the lack of audit trail. So the lack of this whole process that you can demonstrate to somebody as uh, your analysis to convince them that your analysis is in fact valid and, and convincing. So at the moment, I would not personally do that. I would not, I would never personally trust uh, any of these tools to just conduct the full analysis uh, for me. However, there are several things that I do use it for and you could and you should probably use, uh, use it for. So with some attention and some caution, you can use it to create or, or even generate the initial codes. This uh, can be very challenging. So I will definitely not just feed all your data into it and ask for codes. I do have a, a, an ebook, by the way, where I talk about using uh, ChatGPT for data analysis. And you'll see that, as I explained there, and also in several of my videos, uh, I can use it, but you have to be very uh, closely in charge, you have to be monitoring the whole uh, process. So ideally, uh, even if you use it for code generation, you would do it very gradually and you'd still be very much involved in the process. And then you can use it, uh, the, the, basically the farther you get, the more uh, acceptable I would say uh, is the use of AI because the, uh, at that stage there is less and less creative involvement, so to speak. So, so you can just kind of use it for refining just like you did with your writing. So you can use it to organize these codes that you have into groups or, or later into themes that you're creating. You can bounce some ideas of AI, basically checking your logic, checking how somebody uh, else would would code it. So basically almost like intercoder uh, reliability. One of you mentioned that, by the way, uh, during our one to one sessions. And, and I was actually surprised because I never thought of it before, but you can use it as intercoder reliability, basically. And like I said, any kind of theme refinement, I use it a lot for rewarding, refining the themes, just because sometimes I lack ideas, and it may have better ideas than myself. But then again, the data is there and the data is mine. And that's very important. For the time being, it's not acceptable to just show the final results, you have to be able to provide this audit trail. That's very important. So you do have to participate in the process of data analysis. And now the final category, this, is, this one is interesting, and it comes from the University of Oxford. Again, I was very happy to see it, because they do seem to encourage this kind of use and they they do seem to be very well aware of of the various benefits that ai can provide and this is uh, to uh, support general learning and they talk about things like preparation for lecture so it's not exactly about writing the dissertation but again things that you've probably been using some of you definitely have been doing so uh, preparing for lectures you know asking about the key concepts either be beforehand or even after the lecture getting different explanations of you know various uh, difficult topics uh, analogies and stuff like that. So note making, note organization. I've reviewed several tools for organizing notes and and uh, summar again summarizing content and this kind of thing. Or even I, I reviewed this tool for 
organizing your supervision notes into podcasts that you can later listen to. Because again, why not? There are different learners and if it works for you, then there's nothing wrong with doing that. So in short, you can see the pattern here. There are so many ways in which you can use AI. I'm sure you've been using and implementing many of these things in practice anyway, so I don't want to review all these possible ways because we may actually feel a little bit overwhelmed, I believe at this point with all these cool tools. But the pattern here, as uh, I am I hope you can see now, is that ethical use generally uh, is the one where you do not use AI to generate original content. You don't use it to replace you or your intellectual contributions. Instead, you, you're using that to support what you have been doing. But now let's uh, have a closer look at what the university say about how to talk about it. So once you've been using all these things, the, the main question quite often is, what can I actually admit? And and here is where, again, the students quite often decide not to say anything. In fact, I have been advising some of my students not to talk about it because, you know, just in case, because some people still are not okay with any mention of any AI and straight away they will assume you just let uh, AI or ChatGPT do your work for you. So I have been quite often, uh, I, I've been advising people just not to mention it. If it's something minor, like obviously, if you just use it to generate a few uh ideas for uh for let's say a structure of a paragraph why even mention that it's not like you have to mention that you've been using microsoft word for example so that's just yet another tool uh, that you can use however the problem or the reason to mention some of these things is also to make sure that you don't later get accused of things you did not do you may have heard by now about people who have been wrongly accused of using ai uh, to generate their content and even expelled from universities and like i said i have this video where uh where this AI detector showed 100% uh, flagged my content uh, that I wrote as 100% AI generated just because I used a little bit of ChatGPT support to, to proofread my uh, paragraph that I wrote. So you have to be careful. So to kind of future proof from uh, and, and avoid these situations, basically, I think it may be a good idea to to openly talk about the AI or the use the way you use AI. So how do we do that? Before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that I offer a whole bunch of services. Just go to my website and explore them. Most of them are one-to-one uh, -one Zoom tutorials where we can discuss any aspects of your work at any stage, starting from planning your study to implementing your study or analyzing the data. Just have a look at the website. And now let's get back to the topic of this video. So how do we talk about the use of AI in our work? So generally, the best practice is to be transparent. The best practice is to be transparent and to talk about it. Because these days you are very likely to use some of the tools and use AI at some stage of the process. And by talking about it, by being transparent and showing that you're serious about it, and you're willing to disclose some of these things, it actually works in your favor, because then at least the person, the examiner, the supervisor will not think that you're hiding something from them, especially if they have a suspicion that you may have used AI. Uh, in your writing or at some other uh, stage. So when we look at all these guidelines and I analyze all the different guidelines, there are uh, separate documents, there are also specifically assessment related guidelines and there are guidelines for teachers and guidelines for students. Uh, what really emerges uh, is that transparency and academic integrity. So referencing any use of AI, being transparent about uh, what kind of tool you used. Uh, providing links, providing information about these tools, that's uh, that's where you start. Explaining how you adopted these tools, how you adopted these tools and what was the impact of these tools on uh, the final outputs that the reader can see. So again, just explain what, uh, how, how you use it, were there any adaptations, uh, any changes, any adjust adjustments based on AI. Explain is, is basically like something you do with a pilot study and then you explain as a result of the pilot study, I changed some interview questions. So you can explain, for example, that here is a, an example paragraph or, a, or an example of what I did, and then I change it to this as a result of, let's say, consultation with, with AI. Don't go uh, too crazy about, I would say, don't provide ev every single evidence of every single paragraph or little uh, modification that you did, but just be reasonable. Just explain what generally was the role that AI played in this process. And this leads me to another thing. This one, one was mentioned by Monash University, and it's about transparency and providing documentation. So document the, the use of AI. I like this one because it's exactly about audit trail, what I said uh, when I talked about data analysis. So being able to provide that evidence, that audit trail. So when you analyze the data, you have to be able to show, here is how I got to this point that, that we are at 
at the moment. And the same uh, is what they suggest when we talk about AI. So generally, uh, save some screenshots, uh, show some uh, prompts that you use, maybe uh, some links, uh, basically to show the reader exactly what was happening. Because if you show some of the prompts and and these prompts demonstrate your good understanding of it. So imagine that you're showing prompts that you use in data analysis. You have your coding and you're feeding that into ChatGPT or whatever tool you're using and you're asking very specific questions. Organize these initial codes into focus coding, for example, or these are open codes. Now I need Excel coding. Can you help me uh, move them into or categorize them into several groups? This prompt shows that you know exactly what you're doing. So you're fully responsible still for the whole process. You're overlooking the process of data analysis and you're just using AI uh, to support, to speed up or to make this process more effective. So, so being transparent like that and providing that uh, audit trail essentially will really help you in the long run. Then they often talk about uh, transparency in terms of consulting, consulting the institution, your teachers. So just try to see what your institution says uh, about this. And I'm pretty sure that they do say something because it's in their best interest to be also very transparent and very direct and explicit about it. But just see what's allowed, what's not allowed. And then on the level of individual assignments, assessments, there are separate guidelines that I found as well, separate guidelines for teachers, for students, for assessments. So lots of things there. And again, ask your specific teacher, maybe your specific lecturer for a specific class ask them uh, what is allowed for this specific assignment. So to wrap up, I think transparency is really uh, what it all boils down to, academic integrity and things that we generally felt, and I'm sure most of you uh, felt the same way. We kind of have this gut feeling of what's ethical, what's not ethical. The problem before that was that what I said, there were no guidelines and it seemed like everybody in academia just hates AI. So the lecturers and the universities themselves. So not surprisingly, people started to hide the fact that they are using these tools, which is not the best outcome. So so it's all about transparency now. Be direct, be honest about it, uh, be confident about it, and just do it the right way. And also, I really like this advice from Newcastle University. So generally, two questions that you should ask yourself. The first question is, am I relying on AI in ways that harm my actual learning and skill development? How important is that? You don't want to, it's not just about submitting your assignment. It's not just about getting that paper, that document, that diploma. It's about you and your future. And that's something that is very important. It's, it's kind of not discussed uh, often enough. I've recently uh, got access to these uh, TikTok accounts and discussions, and I was pretty shocked at how people talk about using AI, how happy they are to just literally outsource the whole dissertation. I've seen people who were bragging about using AI to write their dissertation in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But the question is, is it helping you learn? Is that what you're paying your money for? You're paying your money to learn, to develop professionally and to have a good career. You're not going to have a good career if that's what you're doing. Uh, that, this is it. I hope you learned something new. Comment, talk to me, tell me how you're using it. If you have any questions, ask me these questions. Hopefully we'll get somewhere eventually because you keep asking me about these ethical uses and I never have a good answer. Now I feel like we're finally getting there and and it's getting better and easier for us to use these AI tools and not to worry about things. If you're new around here, consider subscribing and like this video if you learned something new.